Okay guys, welcome back. Just a quick review of what we did here. This is the same question, haven't changed anything. Just wanted to review it quickly. Whenever you're doing power factor correction, and it actually doesn't matter whether you're correcting to unity or 90%, we haven't learned how to correct to 90% yet, but we will very soon. But uh, every sing as soon as you realize that it is a power factor correction question, guys, you're gonna have to try to figure out what's going on with the circuit before correction. In other words, calculate the true power the react the reactive power and the VA you know get the whole thing fill, filled in do not leave this diagram until it is completely full okay guys so you need to have all four things around this uncorrected power phaser diagram before you move on I've seen students they start this and then they start correcting it meanwhile this thing isn't finished and then they're screwed because they can't finish it okay so once you start drawing this uncorrected power phaser diagram guys you finish it off. In other words, VA, power, VARs, and power factor. The whole thing's got to be there. All right, guys? Now, once you've drawn the uncorrected power phaser diagram, there is going to be two things that happen. If you're correcting to unity, guys, the size of the capacitor will be equal to this. All right, guys? It will always be, you know, you're trying to take care of all this reactive power with the capacitor. So the answer for the cap here is going to be this. Now, the second thing that's going to happen is your power and your VA will be the same after correction, okay? Because you've added a third phaser that's taking care of all the reactive power due to the inductor, and your VA is now a line that's on top of your true power. All right, guys? So your cap's going to be equal to this, and your VA is going to be equal to this whatever your power was. All right, guys? And I've drawn a corrected power phaser diagram. You should too, guys, because then it'll be easier, you know? I've seen it get where guys don't draw this, okay? And then they're trying to calculate the line current. They don't know what to do, all right? Because they only got this, and they don't have this little drawing showing that the VA is 5200, all right? And so they're trying to calculate, you know, the, the VA after correction using this number, and then they get 32, okay? So... Uh, uncorrected power phaser diagram, completely filled out. Corrected phaser diagram, completely filled out. And the way you draw this power phaser diagram is you start with the true power because it is going to be the same as the true power was before correction. So that blue line first. Second line is this VARS. It is all the reactive power due to the inductor. Okay. Then you can add your cap. It's going to be equal to that and then you can add your VA, it is going to be equal to that. All right, guys? Now, there's one more thing I wanna show you because some of the homework questions are going to ask you how many microfarads this capacitor is. So it's gonna ask you to calculate the capacitor in VARS, and by the way, power factor correction capacitors are sold to you in VARS, okay? We're gonna calculate how many microfarads it is, but understand that when you order a power factor correction capacitor, you're going to order it in VARS or KVARS. It's just like baseboard heaters, guys. When you go and order a baseboard heater, you're not going to ask for a certain amount of ohms. So I need a 10 ohm baseboard heater. Okay. What you're going to ask for is, uh, you know, how much, how much power? Okay. 2000 watt baseboard heater at 240 volts, 1000 watt baseboard heater at 120 volts or whatever it is. All right, guys. So same with caps. You're going to order them in VARs or KVARs. And so we've calculated that. This is going to be a 6K VAR capacitor that you need to correct this motor. But just for fun, we're going to calculate how many microfarads that is. And the way I do it, you know, the Van Andel way, always the Van Andel way, guys. There's more than one way to do this. And I'm going to show you, you know, what I consider to be the easy way. And uh, you can, if you can figure out another way to do it and get the right answer, that's fine with me. Okay, guys, but uh, how am I going to figure out how many, uh, you know, microfarads that is? And there's actually two steps if you do it the Van Andel way, guys. So the first thing we have to understand is that this capacitor here is 6079 VARS. Now, if you look at the microfarad formula... It's basically this one right here, guys. It's X, C. The only formula that I know that could work that has microfarads in it, or farads for that matter, is X, C is equal to 1 over 2 pi F, C, okay? And C in this formula is the capacitance in farads. 
The only problem with this formula is I need to know, you know, XE, and I only know VARs. Okay, so the first thing I would have to do is calculate how many ohms this capacitor is, guys. And if I can calculate how many ohms this is, then maybe I can calculate how many microfarads it is. Now, the way we're going to calculate how many ohms it is, is we're going to use this formula that you learned in level one. Uh, it's this one right here, guys. P is equal to E squared over R. Okay, this is one of the power formulas, but this isn't a resistor. It is a capacitor, so the equivalent to that circuit or to that formula is VARS is equal to E squared over XC. Okay, and this is one of the formulas that we learned when we started learning about power. You know, we said there was three power formulas. And this formula is this formula, except for this is for capacitors and this is for resistors. Right, guys? So, look at this formula has VARS in it, which we have. It has XC in it, which we need. And it has E in it, which is given. Okay, because this thing is connected in parallel, so it's going to be at 250 volts. Now, we have to transpose this formula, and it transposes like this. Xc is equal to E squared over Vars. Okay, so that is the same formula. Now, E squared, 250. Vars is the size of the capacitor. And we're going to calculate that. 250 squared divided by 6079, uh, yes, equals, okay? So this capacitor is 10 ohms, guys, 10.28 ohms, all right? And now that we know that, we're going to, you know, figure out this here, and we have to transpose this formula as well for C, because we want the answer in farads or microfarads, actually. So if we transpose this formula, guys, it's going to be C is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC, okay? So this is kind of step one, figure out how many ohms it is. Step two, figure out how many farads it is. So it's 1 over 2 uh, times pi times 60 times... Uh, this is supposed to be xc, right? 1 over 2 pi f xc if I'm solving for c. So 10.28. So I'm going to calculate that. 2 times pi times 60 times 10.28 equals 1 over x equals. And according to this, it says 0. 0.000. 258 uh, farads, all right, guys, which is 258 microfarads, all right, guys. So, two steps, and this question doesn't even ask for it in microfarads, but some of your homework will. After you've calculated how many you know vars it is, the way to convert that into farads or microfarads is to apply this formula. It's always going to look like this. Xc is equal to E squared over Vars. It is the circuit current squared over the Vars of the capacitor, 10.208 ohms. The next thing it's going to ask, we're going to have to figure out, I guess, is how many farads it is. And it's this formula right here, but it's transposed for C. 1 over 2 pi Fxc. There it is. 258 microfarads is the capacitor size. All right, guys? And uh, yeah, I know, you know, I know, it's terrible, okay? But give your homework a try. Unit 5, handout 5. We just did number 4, guys, but there is a whole bunch of other ones, all right? So do them all because very soon we're going to do power factor correction to 0.9, which is also no big deal, but... We'll wait a couple day or two for that, okay, guys? So have a good day. Hope you're well, and uh, you know, enjoy the sunshine if it's sunny out.